Hello and welcome to Adobe Live. Welcome to my half hour Adobe Express show. Uh, my name is Liz Mosley and I hope if you are in the UK, you're having a great bank holiday. Thank you for joining me. Um, let's have a little look and see who we've got in the chat. We've got Kirsty, Jess, Doris, Jennifer, Gareth, Tim. Nice to see you all. Thank you for coming. Um, yeah, we've got a fun one today. We're going to be having a little play around with making patterns in Adobe Express. Now, yeah, Adobe Express might not have been your first choice for making patterns. There's lots of um, ways that you can do it in Photoshop and Illustrator. Um, but actually, it's quite fun to do because obviously you've got all the design assets and the icons available to you and so you can make some pretty cool stuff very quickly as is the way with Adobe Express so we're going to have a play around with that today and then we'll have at the end we'll have a little look at how we can mock those up and see what they might look on some products um, and I will also fill you in on my little pattern challenge that I'm running um Oh, just says it's Labor Day in Germany. That's cool. I didn't know that. Oh, so people who aren't at their day job can come and hang out. It's so nice to have you, Jess. Um, oh, great to see everybody. Yeah, you can't, Kirsty says you can't beat a bank holiday Monday. That is, yeah, that's true. There's, there's a good vibe about it for sure. Um, and we've got a lot of them this month in the UK. I think we've got three. <laughs> so yeah, there's only one Monday that um, people will be working. So great. Well, let's dive in to Adobe Express. So if you haven't used it before, head to express.adobe.com and we'll get started. So I am going to start by creating my pattern on a square canvas so I'm just going to go with Instagram post because I know that that's going to give me a square canvas um now one of the things to think about is that this isn't necessarily going to be a perfectly seamless pattern but we can do a pretty good job of making it seamless um it'll it'll almost be seamless but we're going to be doing it by eye rather than anything else um so yeah, let's just dive in. Now, you might be thinking, well, you might have a project that you're working on, maybe for a client that it would be perfect to make a pattern for. Um, I, um, with a friend of mine, Ocean, we have a pattern challenge on Instagram. So every month we set um, a weekly pattern and then people interpret that however they want. And so I found that really helpful for practicing making patterns myself. Um, if you head over to my Instagram, you can find it here. It's called 52 patterns a year because um, we're going to do one a week for a year, but we'll probably keep it going afterwards. And then you can see over here, it's got the prompts for May. So today's prompt is cactus. You don't have to do it today. It can just be any time in the week. So we'll do in a bit, we'll do um, a cactus pattern for the challenge. But yeah, if you're looking for inspiration as to patterns that you could play around with, then you can check that out. Um, to start off with, I think I'm going to go to design assets. So you, if you've played around with Express, you'll know that there's a lot of assets, shapes, photos available. So there's lots of different ways that you could um, start your pattern. You could even use images that you got and use the remove background tool and then create a pattern with those elements um so yeah hi caroline nice to see you um okay so i am gonna look for flowers to start off with um and because i found these gorgeous sort of like i guess they'd be etched style wouldn't they um flowers so i'm just gonna select a whole bunch of these um, what's quite nice about this is that they're all of a similar style, so they're going to look really good together. So I love that about Adobe Express. That there's almost like illustration collections. Um, well, it's not almost like that is what it that is what it is. Illustration collections, um, and so you know that everything's going to look nice and consistent. So you're not sort of putting loads of different illustrations together. Now you'll notice some of them have got a crown and some of them don't. The ones with a crown are you can only. Um, access if you are a premium Adobe Express user, but you'll see that there's still plenty of them that are available without a crown. Um, so if you are following along, there'll be plenty of illustrations for you to use. And yeah, if you if you are not um, 
like feel free to follow along if you want and make your own patterns while we go that would be really cool so let's just get a few other different shapes and sizes we want like a variety so that we can squeeze things into any gaps we've got I would say <laughs> um, I'm gonna get these sort of into position first and then um, I'll probably think about color afterwards. Um, I actually love how these look in monochrome. Um, so I'm probably not going to change the color. But if you are using design assets like this and you want to change the color, um, unlike with symbols where you'd click on the symbol and it would come up with a color uh, sort of uh, option here, that you can't do that. But you can change the color using filters. So if we head into filter, you'll see I can I can choose any color I want. Um, so if you did want to change the color, so have maybe each one a different color, then you can absolutely do that. Um, but for this pattern, I'm going to keep it black and white for now. I'm going to add a colored background in, in a minute. Um, so what I'm going to start doing is arranging my flowers. Now I'm going to take this one slightly off the canvas, but remembering that this, when I sort of tile it together, and this is what I mean by kind of having to do this seamless pattern by eye rather than say Adobe Illustrator doing it for me. This section that peeps off the canvas here is going to come up down here. So I'm going to leave a space down here for it to slot in. Um, and then I'll just start arranging the others um, around the canvas. And I think I'm going to add some other more modern elements in a minute. So it doesn't necessarily have to be, um, you know, like every gap perfectly filled um we'll just yeah we'll get started with this I might take this one off the top slightly as well so that's going to appear down here so I'll just move that up slightly keep that down there just maybe make it a bit bigger now this one we need to move up to make space for our flower that's going to appear there um, and then I feel like we just need maybe one here and one here. So maybe this one could work well. Um, maybe I'll put that in here. I'm going to try and have not too many going off the edge because it does complicate things slightly. And, um, I need one to go in this space here. So maybe that one, I don't think we've got that one yet. Cool. So I like having how this is coming together. One thing that you are going to want to bear in mind as you're working on this is that there is a layer limit in Adobe Express, which I believe is 32 layers, which I don't think we're anywhere near close to reaching yet. But if we do, there is a workaround that we can um, use by grouping our um, images together. Okay, so we've got, I think that's coming together nicely. Uh, what I'm gonna do is change the background color and I'm actually gonna go to um, colors to get some color inspiration. So I think I'm gonna pick something from here, maybe this one. Um, yeah, I like that. And then I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is um, add, oh, Umicorn says, oh, it's a duplicate. Which one have I duplicate? Oh, it is a duplicate. Oh, can't live with that. <laughs> let's change that one. I missed that. Okay, let's find one that I haven't used. Thanks for spotting that. I have used that one. Oh, I've used most of them. Maybe I haven't. I don't think I've used this one. Let's go with that one. Oh, I'm glad some someone spotted that because that would have annoyed me. <laughs> um. I don't think I've used that one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is go to shapes and I'm just gonna get a really simple circle. So we'll just head into the, oh, I already have that last one as well. Okay, let's just roll with it. I can't see it. Hopefully, hopefully it's not too bad now. Um, Not too noticeable anyway, if I've got duplicates. Now what I'm gonna do is I've got these sort of like really traditional etchings and I'm gonna add in some sort of quite modern looking bright colored spots. But what I'm gonna do is play around with the transparency so that you can see the etching coming through. Um, and I'm just gonna scatter these around different sizes and in different places. I'm gonna change the color. Um, so this, you'll see it's got my uh, color palette that I chose. So I'm just going to, um, yeah, play around with this. 
add some spots in maybe if there's any gaps like the spots will fill them a bit so it won't matter that it's not super full i am always like tempted though to almost like overfill my patterns i think um i feel like every every um every little space needs to be filled which is not true at all like actually having some blank space like well or some i've seen some patterns that look work amazingly where there's like a lot of blank space and i think that works really well um so it's definitely you can definitely play around definitely doesn't have to be stuff like crammed into every little corner like i tend to do um but yeah i think this is coming together i think we need another spot in here so i'll just keep adding hope i don't reach my layer limit anytime soon i think we're doing okay so I'll just try and make sure there's like a good, a quite like you want it to look even. So make sure there's like an even spread of the spots. Um, okay, so I think that's looking pretty good. Ah, oh, hi Angus, nice to see you. So what I'm going to do now is my my background. So I've added the color to the actual background rather than it being a shape on the background so now what I should be able to do is just select everything that's on my artboard it won't select the background and I'm gonna group it together and then I'm effectively just gonna tile this design so that we can see um how it works I guess like a seamless like I mentioned a seamless pattern so I'll just put that up there and then I'm just gonna copy and paste it and bring this over here. Just try and make sure I line it up as close as possible. And again, what I'm looking for here is, is balance. So I, it doesn't have to be perfectly seamless, I don't think. I just want it to look, I don't want there to be any sort of like really noticeable gaps. And you'll see because we left that space down at the bottom left that this is, this is sitting quite nicely um, in that corner and now we've got we're a little bit close here so I just need to bring it down slightly but yeah I think that's looking that's turned out pretty well and I'm actually really happy with how that's looking so yeah as you'll see we've really quickly made a beautiful repeat pattern now I'm just going to save this always or give it a name it's saving by itself thankfully just save it as flower pattern. Um, I love the fact that Adobe Express auto saves. Um, so I'm just going to download this as a JPEG for now. And I'm just going to pop it into my, actually, I don't need to pop it into my desktop, do I? I'm just going to leave it there for now. Um, I'm going to do another one, another pattern. So I'm going to do a cactus pattern because uh, that's the prompt for today in my challenge. And then we're going to take the patterns that I've created and we're going to head over into Photoshop and have a little play around with how they look mocked up. Um, okay, so let's let's start again. I'm actually going to just stay in the same document and I'm just going to add a page. I'm not going to duplicate the page because I want to start from scratch um, and I want it to be the same as this page. So I'll just end up with another blank square canvas, which is great. So let's have a look in shapes to start off with. Um, get back to shape. I don't want basic shapes and put in cactus and see what comes up. And yes, I knew that there'd be lots of Oh, I actually love the simplicity of this one. But this pattern, I might just find one cactus that I like and make a pattern with that rather than having lots of different elements. Jess says, this is super quick and a beautiful pattern for a wrapping paper for a flower shop. Yeah, or a, fl a flower seed pack. That would look so good. And yeah, you could download it as a, you know, like a high res PDF and use it for printing um, quite a lot of my clients have got uh, tissue paper printed for their products um, with patterns on. So I like create them a brand pattern and they put it on that. And it honestly really elevates their packaging, in my opinion. It looks so good. Um, it's just like a little added thing. I just love having patterns as part of branding because I just think it adds a bit of personality, gives you some flexibility as to what you can do. Flip, there's so many... Uh, so many cactuses <laughs> and this is my always my constant dilemma um on these lives is actually picking something 
So let's have a look. Let's, I think I want something that's sort of dark. I actually quite like this. Maybe I'll go for this. Um, and you could do, if you wanted to, you could do a pattern that was like very uniform in rows. So you could literally just tile them across in rows, maybe alternating the color. So let's just give that a try and see how it turns out. We could just put a bunch in like this. Um, I might move it over and let me just move it over like this and put another one in here. I'm going to go to colors and pick some different colors for this one. Maybe like something like this. Ooh, quite like that. Remember, there's this shuffle button as well. So you can shuffle through colors. Um yeah maybe I'll go for that and then what I'm going to do is alternate these so maybe I'll go for this like red um and then what I'm going to do is group these together and I'm going to do a sort of like offset pattern for this one so it, this kind of fits quite nicely in the gap there um what I will need to do is ungroup and get one of these red ones just so that there's like a tiny little bit of red I think peeping in over on the right hand side um and then if we oh if we group this together again um we can keep doing this sort of offset design so yeah this is this is very different in style from the last one um Uma says, are you using a shortcut to duplicate the shape instead of the button? Yeah, I'm just using uh, the copy and paste shortcut. So command C, command V on my Mac. Um, but yeah, there is a button over here that you can use to um, duplicate. Um, and it gives you the shortcut as well. Oh, command D, which is not what I'm doing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's very, there's always like multiple ways to do things, isn't there? But yes, I am using a shortcut rather than using the button but you can do whichever way you want so i on a, i'm not sure i love the colors of this one actually let's have a little play but you can see how you can something simple could be really striking as well um let's try something Ooh, that could be fun um let's try another one because i actually saw um in design assets let's get rid of our search for flowers and put in cactus so we've done a, a pattern that used like um design assets it was quite illustrative of the flowers then we used a symbol from shapes but now what i quite fancy doing is i found these earlier these I mean, they're photographic images of cactus leaves, which I think looks really cool. Um, I love the colors on them. So let's bring in a few of these. And again, we'll just make a really simple pattern that can be repeated. I'm sure I'm gonna end up repeating some of these leaves because they look quite similar, <laughs> but that's fine. Um, you can do your due diligence, a bit, due diligence a bit better than me and make sure that you don't have any repeats if you don't want to. Not that that's necessarily a problem. I like how the leaves have all these different shapes. I'm going to put some in these gaps. Um, I think there might be different um, shortcuts, Uma. Uma says, I thought there was a different shortcut other than Control C V for Express. But you can definitely use a lot of the shortcuts that you're familiar with using from other like tools um so yeah that's one of the things i like is it is quite intuitive a lot of the same shortcuts work perfectly with this one i'm going to try and not have any of them hanging over just to make my life a little bit easier but we might have to sort of rejig things as we try it out i don't think i've got this one yet let's um pop this one in here turn it round I mean, the colors on these cactus leaves are just so pretty. It's like, um, it's got its own gradient, which is cool. Okay, I think I've used all of them now, but let's just grab um, another one, maybe that one. And we'll pop it in. Oh yeah, I've used that one right there, but never mind. You get the idea. Um, and then I feel like it, it would be cool to have something in the background. Maybe not quite that. 
Let's try. Oh, I actually really like that. Um, let's go with that. I mean, it's bold, um, but I do like it. OK, so what I'm going to do is do what I did before. I'm going to group together all my ele elements and I've used the same um, the shortcut that you'd expect for that and just done command G. But you'll, you, there's the button up there so you can use that as well. Um, and then I'm just going to tile it again like I did before. Um, oh, Annika. Annika's here with the tips. Option click drag works too. See, there's always like so many ways to do things, which is great. Um, and hi, Annika. Nice to have you with us. We are making practice patterns, <laughs> as you do. Um, you'll see here that I've just made this one slightly too high. I'm just going to bring that down. Um, but, you know, considering that it's not, I'm doing this like seamless, seamlessly, I guess, by eye, it's turning out pretty well. Um, so, yeah, I'm pleased with that. I'm going to just nudge it all up a bit. And what I'm going to do now is download this one as well. Did I do just this page? Yeah, I did. Perfect. Um, and what I am going to do now is head over into uh, Photoshop and have a little play. So I just got two mock-ups that I've used before. You'll see this one's got a um, pattern knot that I previously designed on. Um, and we'll just try out what it looks like. So if I head to layers, um, it's as easy as um, just dragging and dropping the pattern onto here. So what I'm going to do is head to my downloads and I'm just going to drag over the cactus pattern onto here um, and resize it. And we'll see how this looks if we just close that. You'll see down here we've got lots of other layers that I've put on this swimming costume. And it's just, and there we see what it looks like on a swimming costume. Now you'll see there's a few other things that I can change. So just inside here, um, I can change the color of that. So if I just click on this box, um, and I can just pipette, this, pipette, pipette, use the eyedropper tool, I should say, for this color. Um, I might want to make it like a little bit darker just to sort of add a little bit of shadow. Um, I like this swimming costume. It's it's bright, <laughs> but I think it could be quite cool. Um, and you can change the background as well. So this background actually works pretty well, but maybe I'll get like a pink from the um from the design. And then you could just yeah, save this. So what I usually do is I when I create a pattern for my pattern challenge, is that I create the pattern just flat and then I create a mock-up and I share both of them on my Instagram. Um yeah, I really like how that turned out. Let's try the tape. Um, so if we head to the layers and I'm going to drag over the flower pan for this one. <gasps> oh, OK. So um, I think you can only see my express and not. OK, and not Photoshop. OK, hang on a second. Um, that is strange. Let me just stop sharing my screen one second. And can you see it now? Can you see my Photoshop? Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. Okay, let me go back. Hopefully, let me know in the chat if you can see it now. I thought I'd shared my full screen, but obviously it only shared one window. Absolute classic rookie error. Um, hopefully you can see it now. Let me know if you can't see what I'm doing. This is uh, what you heard me describing <laughs> with the swimming costume. Um, so this is how it turned out. So if I go to layers, you can see I just put the layer on here um, and I just put the pattern on there, sorry. And then this is how it looked on the swimming costume. And then I just adjusted the color of this inside bit by pipetting something from the swimming costume. Um, so hopefully you can all see that now. OK, great. You can see it now. So let's go back to the tape. So we're just adding a pattern to this tape. Um, and then I've just dragged it over the flower pattern. And then if I just click save, then it should appear on the tape. And you can see how cool this would look. So this would look great for like a flower shop. Um, 
yeah, it could be great for packaging. So let's just get this on the tape underneath. So you'll see here, it just says design tape bottom. So we'll just do the same thing again. We'll just drag over the flower pattern. Um, and I'm just going to scale it up really big, but you could, you could play around with what sort of size you wanted it to be. Just save that and you will see it on the tape at the bottom. And it just gives you a really quick and lovely way to, um, yeah, show how something could work on an actual pattern. Um, so yeah, sorry about, sorry about my mistake there, guys. I'm glad you alerted it to me, alerted me to it very quickly. Um, but yeah, hopefully you didn't miss too much. You can see it all now. But yeah, mock-ups are a great way to show. And I just think you can see with these patterns, creating Adobe Express really quickly, um, these could, you could make these for clients, for projects, um, and it just works so well. And it's just always nice for people to be able to see real representation of what the patterns could go on so yeah there we have it making yourself some patterns in adobe express if you give it a go um, i would love to see what you've made let me know if you join in the in the pattern challenge tag me i'd love to see it um you can if we scroll out you can see the different patterns that we've made this is definitely my least favorite but you know we're just playing around with the symbols i think this one's turned out really well I might start thinking about what I could use that on, maybe like a notebook cover or something. But yeah, let me know if you followed along and you made your own pattern. And yeah, just another example of fun and creative things that you can do in Adobe Express. Uh, yeah, so that is the end of our stream today. If you want to stick around in, I think, half an hour, oh no, in an hour, um, Joe is going to be around doing a Adobe Firefly stream, which is going to be awesome. And then he's also back at two and he is going to be animating a magazine cover, which sounds awesome. So stick around, come back in an hour and hang out with Joe. Um, he is going to be having a fun time streaming this afternoon. Uh, I won't be here next week, um, but I will see you in two weeks time for our next Adobe Express hotline. So make sure when you see the stories um, on the Adobe Live account, pop in your suggestions of what you'd like to see me tackle in one of those shows and i hope you have the best the best a great rest of your day um enjoy your bank holiday if you're in the uk enjoy your labor day if you're in germany and i'll see you all soon <laughs>